Okay, so I'm just uh, checking my colleague and she is not able to join. Uh, but okay, I'm gonna start sharing my screen and we're gonna start with this presentation and we are going to be ready to talk about advanced air mobility. Welcome again, my name is Monica Uribe. I'm the NASA Specialist, Education Specialist for Armstrong Flight Research Center. And welcome to the session, today's session, Advanced Air Mobility or AAM. Let's watch the first video. Sometimes you have to do something just to show that you can do it. When the Wright brothers flew for the first time, they flew an experimental aircraft. And in the same way, the Mars helicopter is designed to show that we can fly powered helicopter flight in the Martian atmosphere. From day one, this was the unwavering dream of our team, to get our helicopter launched to Mars so that we can get the opportunity to do the very first rotorcraft flight test in the actual environment of Mars. It's extremely difficult to fly at Mars because the atmosphere is so thin. Compared to Earth, at Mars it's less than 1%. So the first and foremost challenge is to make a vehicle that's light enough to be lifted. And then the second is to generate lift. The rotor system has just been very fast. 2,000, 2,200, 2,400, 2,600. We're spinning between 2,000 and 3,000 revolutions per minute, and it takes a lot of energy. So it's that balance of a very light system, yet having enough energy that's needed to you know, spin the rotor so fast to lift, and on top of it, having to design in the autonomy. It has to be fully autonomous from the time it takes off to the time it lands. What we do do on the ground is we plan the flights, and so we determine from here where we want the helicopter to go. Our experiment window is 30 Martian days. So we have planned uh, up to five flights of incremental difficulty. Very first flight, the main thing is we want to get the legs off the ground. And so we will basically go up uh, about three meters and we'll hover there uh, and then we'll come down again. And that will be the first, you know, really major milestone. Most of our flights will be at the three to five meter height. We will be going horizontally again at a few meters per second, probably go out, you know, 50, 70 meters and come back. In successive flights, we'll probably push that further, try to go further. So our priority will be to get back engineering telemetry and not so much images, but I'm sure we'll return a few, you know, because they'll always look cool. At this point, we've tested all we can on Earth. We have mathematical models that shows how it will fly at Mars, and we've tested it in the simulated environment that we can create on Earth. It really is time now to do the real flight test at Mars. Nothing is a given, but we have done everything we can in terms of a test program here on Earth. The vehicle's performing extremely well so far. It's been doing exactly the right thing, even right now when it's bolted onto the Perseverance rover. So there's a very good chance that we'll pull it off, yes. But it's still high risk and none of us forget that you could have a glitch that, you know, could mean end of mission, yes. It's going to be exciting, reacting to any surprises we have. We can't wait. <laughs> What's really most important is everything we're learning here is for the future rotorcraft systems that we want to introduce into space exploration. Yes, so now Ingenuity, which is part of the AAM or Advanced Air Mobility, is flying in Mars. So welcome again. My name is Monica Uribe. Uh, Uribe, I'm the EPDC Education Specialist, Educator and Professional Development Collaborative located at Edwards Air Force Base in California. And my colleague, Sara Torres, uh, she is located at Ames Research Center, Northern California. So we welcome today. And uh, these two centers focus on aeronautics. But, um, and, um, and aeronautics and our, uh, as well, we follow NASA's journey, have propelled technological breakthrough outs 
push the frontiers of scientific research. So, and expanded our understanding of the universe. These accomplishments and those to come share a common genesis, education in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics or STEM. So in us STEM engagement, we deliver tools for the students and educators to learn and succeed. We seek to create unique opportunities for a diverse set of students to contribute to NASA's work in exploration and discovery, to build a diverse future STEM workforce by engaging students in authentic learning experiences with NASA's people, content, and facilities, and to attract diverse groups of students to STEM throughout learning opportunities that sparks interest and provide connections to NASA's missions and work work. The agenda for today is what is a RMD? Mm, what is a drone? Do we have drones at NASA? Yes, we do. What is AAM and why do we use AAM and how we use AAM? How does AAM fit into the national airspace system? how AAM can fit into your curriculum or our curriculum as an educators and AAM hands-on activities and questions and answers. But we have a question for you. What do you know about advanced air mobility? So advanced air mobility, something who flies, yes, has to be something with flying, but what is advanced air mobility? If you can type it on the chat, can, I don't know if you are able to type on the chat, if you know something about, about advanced air mobility. Well, we're going to, um, talk about how to integrate in specifically two activities today and, and related to advanced air mobility. Um, it's a STEM learning module who contains all the activity guides. We will share it to you. And one is specifically talking about a small unmanned aerial vehicle safety activity. And the second one is the package delivered drone simulation. But these are just the focus, the main focus, and we will share more of the STEM AAM uh, um, activities for you. That's the link. Uh, if you want to go to these activities, it's www.nasa.gov, Aero Research STEM AAM. When we talk about STEM, hmm, what is a STEM? So why we use a STEM? First of all, a STEM is a cluster of all careers, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Um, but um, and, um, and any field or career that creates, discovers, or applies uh, new knowledge to make life better for everybody. So NASA journeys have propelled technological breakouts, as, as I mentioned, and uh, we are committed to make vital investments toward building a future diverse STEM workforce. So the scope of STEM engagement comprises all endeavors to attract, engage, and educate STEM students and educators and to support educators and educational institutions. So the STEM engagement portfolio consists of a diverse set of opportunities, activities, and products encompassing internships, fellowships, students' learning opportunities, such as challenges, competitions, and other experiences, informal education, and out of school learning activities, educational products, tools and platforms, education, educator support, competitive awards to education institutions, challenge to the students as well. So why STEM? STEM education in USA is increasing in popularity. So more schools are implementing STEM learning into their curriculum and making an integral part of what they teach. According to US Department of Education, in an ever-changing, increasingly complex world, it's more important than ever that our nation's youth are prepared to bring knowledge and skills to solve problems, make sense of information, and know how to gather and evaluate evidence to make decisions. We must also make sure that no matter where 
the children live, they have access to quality learning environments. A child's zip code truly not the term their STEM fluency. And we need the STEM because fosters in unity and creativity. In unity and creativity can pair with the STEM and lead to new ideas and innovations. Without in unity and creativity, the recent develops uh, in artificial intelligence or maybe digital learning will not be possible. Encourage experimentation. Uh, the students, uh, uh, there is no bad idea, right? So they can experiment with all the ideas and every idea, idea counts. Without a little risk taking and experimentation, many of the technological advancements that have occurred in the last couple of decades will not be possible. Encourage teamwork. Teamwork is important. In NASA, we do teamwork. So STEM education can be tough, to students of all ability levels. Students of varying levels of availability can work together in teams to find solutions to problems, uh, gather data, write the reports, give presentations, etc. Et 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 so working as a team is important. Encourage teach use. Uh, STEM learning teaches kids about the power of technology and innovation. So when the students encounter new technologies, they will be prepared to embrace them instead of being in hesitating or fearful. This will give them the upper hand in the global landscape. Teaches problem solving and encourage adaptation as well. Some of the instructional strategies for integrated STEM. Um, Inquiry-based learning. So a definition uh, of inquiry-based learning is a statement expressing the essential nature of something. Well, we want to express the essential nature of inquiry-based learning. Uh, inquiry-based learning is an examination into facts of principles, research, a systematic investigation, a basis is something on which something else is established, and learning is the act of experience. Um, so many of the activities will uh, build up each other. They use the inquiry from the previous activity to assist in the activity that follows. Thus, this publication enhance the understanding of meteorology by beginning with basic and essential parameters of weather and then moving through mind engaging. When we are looking for something about inquiry-based learning, um, the good option is uh, a globe. So GLOBE, NASA GLOBE or GLOBE NASA has a, a specific inquiry-based learning uh, activities and, um, and uh, the name is Teaching with NASA STEM Inquiry Resources and the website is in your screen. Just as a child moved throughout the series of stages when learning to walk, programs designed for science education should consider important development stages in moving learners toward taking ch charge of their own learning. And why do we need instructional strategies for STEM? Engaging the students is a challenge, right? So how we can engage in students for more than 15 or 20 minutes? So that's a challenge and takes time for planning. But as an educators, we need to be open and include our knowledge of the students' backgrounds as their hobbies, sports, Sports, extracurriculum activities, interests, etc. The content, such as mathematics and science, should be meaningful and important. And that's mean relevant for all the students. So, utilizing project-based learning, where they have opportunity to use the engineering design process, and we, we can see here the engineering design process that most of us in NASA use, is the best um, uh, model. And, and we needed to motivate and real world context, inquiry based, learning, based and student centered methods of teaching, and uh, solving engineering challenges using an engineering design process, and teamwork and communication.
So the children are born investigators. Yes, the understanding builds over time. The science and engineering require both knowledge and practice. They, 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 we need to build connections to students' interests and experiences in essential, uh, focus on core ideas and practices, and we should, as an educator, we should promote equity. Helping students make sense of the world using next generation science and engineering practices is inspire new generations. And we need to bring their knowledge, the previous knowledge as a fund of knowledge and originally applied by um, uh, Bellis and uh, Greenbelt to describe the historical accumulation of abilities, bodies of knowledge, assets, and culturally ways of interacting um, from a more practical perspective, a student's funds of knowledge can be described as academic and personal background knowledge, accumulated life experiences, skills and knowledge used to navigate everyday social context and world views structured by broader historically and politically influenced social forces. So bringing what the student uh, is bringing with it and uh, using it in our classroom is valuable. But now, why we need a STEM in NASA? And what is NASA Aeronautics Transmission Directory? Sara, are you there? Okay. Um, okay. I think Sarah has a uh, um, computer problems, internet access problems. But okay, so AARMD stands for Aeronautics Research Mission Directory. So NASA Aeronautics has made decades of contributions to aviation. Every US commercial aircraft and US air traffic control tower has NASA developed technology on board that helps improve efficiency and maintain safely research conducted by ARMD. Directly benefits today's air, air transportation system. The aviation industry and the passengers and businesses who rely on aviation every day. Example are the winglets on commercial aircraft. So some of the contributions from NASA are the winglets on any aircraft. So NASA is with you when you fly. A, um, um, a RMD scientists, engineers, programmers, test pilots, facilities managers, and strategic planners are focused on aviation's future. They design, develop, and test advanced technologies that will make aviation much, much more environmentally friendly, maintain safely in more crowded skies, and ultimately transform the way we fly. Yes, NASA is with you when you fly. And when we talk about aeronautics, we need to focus on four of the main centers uh, around the country from NASA. So NASA has uh, more than th the, has 10 centers around the country. And NASA's aeronautics research is primarily conducted at four NASA centers. Ames Research Center, located at uh, Northern California, number six. Uh, Armstrong Flight Research Center in California as well, number 10. And Glenn Research Center in Ohio. And Langley Research Center in Virginia. So it's not just, uh, when we talk about NASA, it's not just talking about astronauts or uh, space shuttle or rockets. So the first, uh, a from NASA, remember the first A from NASA is aeronautics, means aeronautics. Why NASA is focused in aeronautics? Why the, the, the first A from NASA is, uh, is aeronautics? Well, the first A in NASA stands for aeronautics, the science of travel through the air. It's as much about you, me, everybody, flying on airplanes and arriving safely at your destination is, is about astronauts flying in space. Everything and anything who flies is related to aeronautics. 
NASA's roots go back to the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics or NACA. So the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, NACA, who was the predecessor of NASA, was formed on, on 1915, so a long time ago, with a charter to supervise and direct the scientific study of the problems of flight with a view to their practical solution. With luminaries like Orville Wright as members, the group was on the cutting edge of technology in the early decades of flight before eventually being absorbed by NASA in 1958, the NACA accomplished many technological feats. It was a major force for technological change in aeronautics. NASA's efforts were in a large part responsible for turning the American airplane from slow cloth and wood biplanes of the World War I era into the jets of today. The foundations of NASA and the success of its many missions rest uh, squarely on the cornerstone of NACAS, organizational and technical expertise, the predecessor of, of, of uh, NASA. Wind tunnels, flight testing, and computer simulators are among NASA's many tools for research on those problems. Today's entire aviation industry relies on technologic route in NASA's research, inside cockpits, cabins, and jet engines, atop traffic control towers, and from departure gate to arrival terminal at airports everywhere in early coordination with the U.S. Air Force, many of NASA's groundbreaking discoveries with aircraft helped pave the way for supersonic travel and space aviation. And talking about supersonic flights, we're going to, tomorrow, the, the session will be uh, related to the X-planes or supersonic flights. So wind tunnels, winglets, high-speed aircraft, X-planes, parachutes, computer simulations, in acoustics, flying testics, is just some of the NASA uh, um, uh, contributions to aeronautics. So NASA is with you when you fly. So what is drones? Sara, um, are you there? Let me see if there is something in the chat. Okay, I think Sara is having problems with his her sound sounds. But okay. Okay. Anytime, Sarah, just let me know if you are in. If your your um, microphone is working. So drones. Do we have drones in NASA? Yes. What is a drone? So we pretty much imagine a drone as a as a toy sometimes, right? Um, but a drone is more than a toy. So for NASA, uh, the drone is an unmade aircraft that can operate without pilot inside it. So drones can be equipped with high definition, live feed video cameras, thermal infrared video cameras, heat sensors, and radars. Drones can be used for remote sensing, commercial aerial surveillance, commercial and motion picture filmmaking, oil, gas and mineral exploration, disaster relief, research, and recreational use, to name a few. Used to be limited to military use, but now they are used for both consumer and commercial uses. So what things do we need to consider when flying a drone? If you can see it, safety, safety, safety. So safety is in the first place uh, when we fly a drone. Um, ethical air, uh, airmanship. So we need to uh, be saved every single time, it, regardless of the size of the drone. If you are getting a drone for your classrooms, um, safety is first. Uh, come first. What are uh, your objectives with the students and drones? So do you need the drones for just uh, awareness, participation? Um, do you need it for uh, mathematical application, for a engineering application, for agriculture application? What materials budget do you have to work with? So when we are thinking about getting drones, we need to consider so many questions and uh, the budget is one of the, the as an educators, the budget is a, a big, um, a primary uh, 
question. And then what material do I need it in plastic? Do I need the professional drones? Uh, how many drones should I get? Uh, um, is for working inside the classroom or do I need uh, to work outside of my classroom with the drone? Is for just for my hobby, my for, for myself or as a commercial? But always safety comes first. Drones and NASA, yes. So drones and NASA in June and August of 2000, uh, 2020, researchers at NASA's Ames Research Center in California, Northern California, conduct a humane aircraft system, or we call it UAS, flight test or drone aircraft at Moffett Field at Ames. Uh, the purpose of the flight test was to investigate the feasibility of a concept called time-based conformance monitoring or TBCM. Conformance monitoring is an important task of air traffic controllers or UAS traffic management services that will be implemented in the future in which they monitor whether aircraft are adhering to their assigned flight trajectories. So the um, time-based conformance monitoring extends that concept by continuously evaluating the times required for aircraft to maintain those trajectories. For the test at Moffield Field, five specifically designed flight profiles were successfully flown over 25 flights to gather data for the concept evaluation. So yes, we have drones and NASA, and these are just uh, two of uh, uh, examples. Okay, so advanced air mobility is emerging. So we have the four uh, main uh, objectives for advanced air mobility in NASA. One is for public good. So we need to transport people in, uh, to the hospitals and emergency situations, uh, passengers transport, sooner and consumer enterprise goods and services. So if we need to transport them cargo or to reach communities, uh, urban or uh, rural communities, then we can reach using a car or walking and the cargo transport as well. So uh, uh, for commercial uses. But let's see, let's watch a video about what is AAM. What is AAM? AAM is Advanced Air Mobility. At NASA, Advanced Air Mobility represents a new dimension of transportation, a new dimension of safety, a new dimension of mobility, a new dimension of autonomy, AAM is a developing system that allows new technologies like drones to flourish safely and efficiently. New technologies lead to new missions like air taxis, package delivery, aerial photography, emergency response, medical delivery, rescue operations, and that's just the beginning. AAM is like an orchestra. NASA is the conductor and the musicians are all the leaders who want to work together to make music in the sky. Leaders of technology. Leaders of government. And leaders of aviation. The music in the sky is a collection of innovations and regulations. Every design, every law, and every certification are like notes on a page. The goal is to find harmony by playing together, just like in an orchestra. It's a lot like the harmony you see while driving on the road in your car. Thousands of vehicles, merging, yielding, passing. Now imagine what it took to design the roads, the traffic lights, the cars, everything, so that you and your family can safely travel. And that is what AAM is. AAM is the quest to find a new harmony in the sky. 
a safe and efficient way to move passengers and cargo in the city, in the country, and everywhere in between. What? Well, what is NASA's vision and mission for advanced air mobility? So um, NASA's vision for uh, AAM is that it is safe in first place, sustainable, accessible, and affordable aviation for transformational local and integrational missions. It includes the transportation passengers and cargo, as well as aerial work missions, uh, such as infrastructure inspection for search and rescue operations. Includes local missions of about uh, 50 miles radius in rural or urban areas and integrational missions of up to a few hundred miles that occur between uh, urban areas, between rural areas, or between rural and urban areas. But let's see what is the uh, vision and mission for AAM. Yes, let's open up the skies. So, and uh, in this um, process of getting AAM, we can, when NASA comes with a vertical motion simulator. And um, in this particular simulation, uh, there are four passengers and this uh, vertical simulator and uh, is located at NASA's Ames Research Center in California, Silicon Valley. Um, the vertical motion simulator of BMS allows NASA researchers to study the limits of what makes a comfortable air taxi ride. Yes, we are talking now, now about taxi rides. Um, these vehicles will take off vertically. That's one of the characteristics of advanced or uh, AAM and some of the particular uh, flights. So flying from one building to another, for instance. So before slowing down to a hover and landing, NASA can help aircraft designers ensure a ride that's comfortable to most future passengers by identifying how much and what kind of motion people will tolerate. The simulated flight shown uh, here in the passenger research cockpit include out the window graphic recreating a rooftop landing in San Francisco. So um, we are moving forward with the AM national campaign. There is a national campaign, and this is to help make AM a re reality, uh, a re reality for the United States. NASA will begin hosting a series of activities called the AAM national campaign in 2022. So it's coming soon. Designed to 
bring together aircraft manufacturers, promote public confidence in AEM safety, give prospective vehicles, manufacturers and operators, as well as prospective airspace services providers, facilitate community-wide learning while capturing the public's imaginations, identify maturity levels for vehicle performance, safety, insurance, airspace, interoperability, and to develop and demonstrate integrated solutions for civil uh, use. NASA just begins air traffic flight testing with Jovi, and we're gonna talk about, jo uh, I'm gonna show you a, uh, who is Jovi in a, in a second. So this is an electrical takeoff uh, landing or EV toll aircraft. So NASA started testing um, in August 30th with Jovi. But first, uh, before we go to Jovi, uh, I need to show you this amazing picture of the um, the NASA's Advanced Mobility National Campaign Helicopter Test. So this is a Bell OH-58C Kiowa helicopter provided by Flight Research Incorporation Mojave, California, flies at NASA Armstrong Flight Research Center in Edwards, California, the first week of December, 2020. So that marks a mobility national campaign project used the helicopter as a stand in advanced air mobility vehicle to develop a data baseline for future flight testing. And when we talk about Jovi, this is a picture of Jovi. Uh, um, and uh, this is the EVTOL, or All Electrical Vertical Takeoff and Landing. It's another photography or why. This is an application of uh, advanced air mobility or drones at NASA. Uh, this is a picture of uh, Jovi as well. Another amazing picture of Jovi. But now let's watch a video about how Jovi works. We're out here with uh, Jovi Aviation right now taking some acoustic measurements. Um, Really what we're trying to learn is, is get a good data set for an initial characterization of these new type of vehicles. We're also looking at performance data and how we will um, prepare terminal operations for these vehicles uh, as they come into a helipad or a vertiport. And um, we're really looking forward to seeing the data that we get and, and helping move this industry forward. So advanced air mobility or AAM is showing this concept image where multiple types of aircraft uh, are the packed flying over urban, uh, suburban and rural areas. AAM encompasses developing and deploying aviation in transformative and innovative approaches in order to provide aerial mobility in ways not typically seen today. 
NASA's vision is to en enable creation of an AAM system that is safe, economical, and environmentally friendly to move people and packages in population centers forever, changing how citizens around the world benefit from aviation. That is AAM. Now, let's check it out. NASA is ready to support the development and testing of Advanced Air Mobility, or AAM. This emerging aviation market is working towards all-electric, autonomous, and environmentally friendly solutions to reduce road traffic and carry people and cargo in areas where service does not yet exist. NASA's Ames Research Center in Silicon Valley is uniquely qualified to help industry partners and local governments across the country simulate and test these new vehicles to ensure safe and efficient operations in low-altitude airspace. NASA's integrated facilities support three key areas of research, vehicle development, airspace and systems operations, and community integration. The suite of facilities includes the vertical motion simulator, the world's largest flight simulator with six degrees of freedom, including 60 feet of vertical range that creates realistic motion and visual cues for ride or handling qualities assessment and certification. Its flexible simulation architecture makes it easy to test any aircraft math model. The Accelerate facility that uses an immersive cockpit with realistic visual databases allows pilots to test and modify vehicle controls and displays to optimize capabilities. The Airspace Operations Lab, using the NASA-developed UAS Traffic Management Platform, or UTM, provides a framework to study urban airspace and fleet operations at varying levels of autonomy. Computational fluid dynamics data can be integrated into simulations to understand impacts of local wind fields in complex environments. And Future Flight Central, a virtual air traffic control center capable of human-in-the-loop simulation, allows airspace operations research of airports and vertiports to collect data and aid in the study of community integration. NASA has decades of experience partnering with the aerospace community. We are ready to help emerging aviation markets develop safe and efficient air transportation systems of the future. Together, we can make advanced air mobility a reality. That's correct. And all this knowledge, we can take it to the classroom because they are aligned to some uh, standards, right, Sara? Hello, everyone. Thank you, Monica. Yes, they are. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Everything that NASA does is actually aligned. All the activities that are planned and, and um, shared are aligned to next generation science standards. Um, you'll see here that there's also common course um, uh, math standards um, as well. And it's just a list of all the standards that are aligned. Um, go ahead and go to the next standard, uh, the next slide, Monica, please. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about integrating AAM into the classroom. Um, so, uh, this is a STEM uh, learning module that contains all of the activities. Um, of course, they're going to discuss human impact on Earth systems. Um, students can engage with principles of AAM through hands-on STEM activities, um, coding activities, and math lessons. And we're going to talk a little bit more about those in just a little bit in the next slides. Um, these are designed for middle school students, but can be easily modified to be used with younger or older students. Um, NASA is really leading the nation to um, quickly open this new era of air travel called advanced air mobility, um, which we've been talking about all evening. And uh, the vision for AAM is that it's safe, that it's accessible, that it's automated and affordable um, air transportation systems for passengers and cargo. 
Um, so really, uh, hopefully, you know, as, as we talk to the students about this and we talk to them about um, making this capable of serving a previously like hard to reach urban and rural locations, um, this STEM module brings together um, really a, a curated list of NASA activities and resources that can be used to explore uh, the STEM principles behind unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs. And, and the AN system. So our intention is really to provide a broad range of activities centered on AAM and in a variety of ways, um, including some that are hands-on, um, as I mentioned earlier, the coding and the math lessons. So these, again, um, we're gonna go ahead and go to the next slide so we can see some of those activities that are available. So, um, so through uh, the mathematics, so through real world uh, scenarios, um, the activities in this section really cover a range of mathematical concepts. Um, so each one uh, introduces the AM concepts and then, uh, and then, and really prior to completing the activities, um, you know, having the students go through the presentation, kind of what like Monica did, maybe shorten it a little bit for them, but um, talk about what is AM is really the most important one. Um, and it'll help them familiarize with the basics of AM. But we have the flight control math uh, one, which is graphing. So students learn about geofencing uh, through this real world graphing exercise. And uh, students plot and connect points to form lines and shapes. Uh, so this is available with, um, all points in quadrant quadrant one and with points in all four quadrants and you'll also see the literacy skills so this is this is really um truly integrated stem uh with everything so you'll um so students will be very engaged um monica the next slide please thank you so the coding activities um, have students use Scratch, which is a block-based uh, visual programming language, and it's available for free. Uh, we're gonna we have a slide that has several um, links for you to to look at and to be able to choose um, and really use that to create um, AM-related uh, programs. We have Attack of the Drones, which is a coding activity, um, and it takes the students through a process of creating um, a side uh, scrolling game using Scratch. So you can stick with the basics, what, you know, the that comes with the activity um, or suggested for the activity, but also um, you can challenge students to, to add more features um, if they're familiar with the coding. And um, uh, I just uh, recently started um, playing with with Scratch, and it's, um, you know, it takes a little bit to, to start getting used to it, but the kids get latch on very quickly to catch on very quickly and they become masters uh, way before uh, we do <laughs> next next slide Monica please so this particular activity is really a great one to start with because as Monica really emphasis emphasized in her portion of the of the uh, of the presentation is that NASA's really really familiar with a uh, really really um, uh, concerned about the safety. So there's a lot of people who are working with um, UA, uh, UAVs and AAM. And uh, what happens a lot of times is, you know, we have a, 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 a catastrophe, some sort of accident or something that kind of shuts everything down. So NASA's goal is really to start promoting the safety of AAM. And this, this particular activity doesn't take very many the materials, it just takes poster paper or um, uh, uh, cardstock paper or whatever size you like, pens, markers. Um, you can have access to these particular posters. We have the websites, the website where you can actually find these posters and you can print them and you can show them as an example for the students. But, um, but it's really uh, great to see how creative the students can be when they start um, creating their own posters and start relaying that message of safety. Um, you can also go to the FFA, the FAA website, as you all know, um, that's their, their whole exam on being certified in flying drones is all about safety. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, all you need is paper and markers. Um, it's, 
preparation, you really want to expose them to some maybe posters that have already been created. You want to, um, if they're a little old, you can send them to the FAA website uh, as well or the NASA website to start beginning to look at uh, what what it is to be safe and what it looks like and means to be safe. Um, next one, Monica. So uh, the second activity is, is it safe to fly? So um, the students select the location um, and, um, and the app, the uh, Know Before You Fly uh, sites map, and it's got the, the uh, website there for you to click on. Um, you, you know, it's your choosing as an educator to, to find out um, if there are any flight restrictions in that specific area if you want to um, apply it to your particular flight area. Um, but, uh, but everything's there on the, on the website. Activity three is what, uh, what should you do? So this activity actually asks um, uh, students to consider at least one of the following scenarios. And so these are the scenarios, either uh, uh, discuss, you know, um, discuss scenarios related to safety, uh, etiquette, or both. A lot of times, especially when you're talking about drones, we talk about etiquette and what is um, what is uh, that air airmanship um, uh, code of, of being safe and, and being respectful. Okay, Monica, next slide. Um, so those are the posters. You have full access to those. You can print those out. Uh, there's also a, a package delivery drone simulation. Again, this is using Scratch. Um, this coding activity, again, is for grades five through fifth grade through 12th grade. Um, but really what it is, is standard um, materials uh, grade level in this activity and it's using Scratch or you can use Snap, either one works, or another programming language to create an interactive simulation of, of a drone navigating around a geofenced area to deliver a package. So this simulation um, engages students in, in computational thinking, uh, problem solving, and real, real world um, application of mathematics. Um, so again, as I mentioned earlier, this uses um, common core state standards for mathematics um, using ratio and rate reasoning to solve real world problems and mathematical problems, and also next generation science standards for engineering practices. Um, so this is again, uh, the different uh, websites where you can find the block based coding um, uh, web links. Um, and, um, and of course, you have your stages there that you can choose from to put into your programming. Um, you're going to choose a drone sprite um, and then what areas to make off limits. Um, you're going to add the geofencing sprites to create a barrier around the off limits area. And for each geofence sprite, um, you're going to add a costume to enable uh, to change, uh, change uh, enable it to change color. And then you choose to start an endpoint and you add a sprite, um, including um, the ball sprite that works well. So you choose a delivery location, you add, the, you add a sprite, and then um, you choose the appropriate sizes for the sprites as well. Um, so you're gonna have to add additional uh, waypoints as necessary to guide the drone around the geofencing area. Uh, so, um, so yeah. Go ahead, Monica, to the next. And these, and there's, of course, there's extension act ideas as well. Um, next slide, Monica, thank you. Um, so then there's also a rubric um, that uh, you can, that, that also is included. Um, and so you can decide to use a rubric or not use a rubric. Um, so it's totally up to you, but sometimes it's great for students to have the rubric ahead of time so that they know what they are expected to accomplish. So sometimes, you know, you, you may want to start with the rubric first so that they have a clear understanding of what their task is or their challenge is. Okay, the next slide, Monica. This advanced air mobility safety poster contest, I believe is already uh, past, Monica. Um, so, but be on the lookout for more uh, opportunities like this. Um, these do exist. Uh, and so keep an eye out for those at the NASA website. Um, and, uh, 
and take advantage of those because I know that not very many educators do. Next, next slide. I know that we only have three minutes left. Go on to the next slide, please. I don't know if we, did you already go to the next slide? Uh, it may be my internet that's slowing. There you go. Okay, so um, we just wanna offer you some additional resources. Uh, we have a digital badging, which is kind of a, a micro-credential a little course, it's very flexible. It's uh, wonderful for you to participate because it's free and there's lots of different topics and it's a very simple process to get started. You simply um, uh, click on the digital badges little tab at the top of our website and then, and then you create an account. So once you create your account, depending on whatever it is that you decide to, I think believe there's three different choices. There's Google, there's Facebook, and uh, LinkedIn, I believe. But once you create your uh, account, it's important that you stay with the same account. If you go, if you use a different platform, it'll create a whole new person for you, a whole new profile for you, and it won't link the accounts together. So once you choose your platform, stick with that platform, and then you have a plethora of options, um, STEM options for you to go ahead and, and um, participate in as many you, as you like, or as few as you like. Um, when you complete the, little, the mini course, and what it is, it has like different um, uh, stages or modules that you finish throughout um, the badge or micro-credential, and, um, and there may be things like trying out an activity or it could be um, watching a video and then reflecting on it. So these different types of, of, of engaging activities are, are, um, are great to kind of keep you in the loop on what's going on at NASA. And as well, you get credit at the end. So you get teaching um, credits, uh, continuing credits. Uh, please uh, look at this last, uh, take a screenshot of this uh, NASA Aeronautics Educational Resources. These are extra uh, additional resources for you um, that are uh, divided up by a grade level in some er in some instances. And there are eBooks, there are leveled readers, there's um, aeronautics for pre-K and next-gen STEM aeronautics. And it's just uh, so many different activities that are hands-on for you. Go ahead, Monica, next, next slide. And then we have the NASA Aeronautics STEM module where you get um, activities for the X-59 quiet supersonic flight, the X-57 electric plane, which is very cool, which is just um, uh, coming out. And then we have the advanced air mobility, of course. So check out the X-57, it's brand new stuff and it's a lot of fun. Next one. So NASA's uh, Express is NASA's main way to reach out to educators. These are great. Um, these emails are not junk emails, so sign up. You don't get very, uh, you, the, what's sent out is just opportunities for educator professional development, and that's it. Uh, design student challenges and internships and, and a lot more, but it's all related to STEM. Um, and then join our Facebook page, uh, NASA Aeronautics for Educators Facebook page um, uh, is there. Um, and so it just uh, gives you all the updated information and everything that's going on that's new. And I believe that's it. Go to the last slide, Monica. And that's it for us. And thank you very much for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow, I believe. Um, and thank you again. Don't feel free, actually feel free to reach out to Monica or myself if you need any additional resources. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. See you tomorrow. We're talking about X-planes or experimental airplanes, X-57 and X-59. Thank you.